So today I'm going to take a look at a Linux distribution that I actually haven't looked at in many years. This Linux distribution is called Nopix, and Nopix is a Debian-based Linux distribution that's been around forever, except now it has a AI kind of slant to it. You can see now it's Nopix AI Linux, and that intrigues me because I want to know what kind of like built-in AI tooling does this distribution have. Uh, looking at the website, it's a very beautiful website. You know, the screenshots of some of the desktops look good. Uh, they have an XFCE edition, I believe is their main edition. I'm going to go ahead and download the ISO and I'm going to run through a quick installation and first look of Nopix AI inside a virtual machine. I've created a virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and boot into the live environment here. And we're in the live environment. Of course, this is the XFCE desktop environment. And looking on the desktop, I do not see a link to the installation program. And I'm not seeing any links to the installer into the taskbar either. So we're probably going to have to go in the menu system and search for install. Yeah, here it is. Install Nopix. And it launches the familiar Calamaris installer. So let's go ahead and run through the installation. So I'm going to choose uh, next here. Now time zone, it did not correctly choose the central time zone in the US for me. So uh, typically the Calamaris installer does get geolocation right, but it did not in this case. But I can correct it by just Clicking on the map, and now I click Next. Keyboard, uh, English US is correct for me, so nothing to change, so I'll just click Next. Erase disk or manual partitioning. I'm just going to give the entire disk over to Nopix, but you know, looking at the partition scheme, it's going to create a 8.8 .8 gigabyte swap partition. I can't do that. I gave this VM 25 gigs of space. I can't give 9 gigs over to a swap partition. That doesn't make any sense. So normally I don't do manual partitionings on these videos, but today I'm going to run through the manual partitioning. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a new partition table. It needs to be GPT because this is an EFI virtual machine. If it was a legacy BIOS, I could do MBR, but I need to do GPT. And now what do I need to do with my 25 gigabytes of space on this virtual hard drive. Well first I click on this empty space and then hit create. The first drive I need to create will be the EFI boot partition. That typically, I, I believe they recommend at least 300 megabytes, but I'm going to give it, just to be safe, 512 I think is, is a better number. So 512 megabytes. The file system needs to be FAT32. And then mount point needs to be boot EFI slash boot slash EFI. And we need the boot flag turned on. Let me hit OK on that. And now I still have 24 and a half gigs of free space. Let's make the entire rest of this space our normal extend for file system. So we're going to give it all of the available space. And then the mount point needs to be the root. So just slash. As far as flags, I don't need to turn on any flags here. And then let me go ahead and click next. And I didn't get any errors or warnings. A lot of times if you mess up the manual partitioning, you'll get an error message like, hey, you didn't uh, mount this in the right place. You didn't turn on the boot flag, yada, yada, yada. So I think everything's good there. Let me create my user. I'm going to call my user DT. Let me create a host name for this computer. I'll call it Nopix-VM. And then let me choose a strong and complicated password for the DT user and then repeat the strong and complicated password. And then do I want to log in automatically without asking for a password? No, that's ticked off by default. I'm going to leave it ticked off because you should always have to enter a password to get into a computer for privacy reasons. I'm going to click next. I get a summary. Location looks good. Keyboard looks good. The partition scheme now looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click install. This takes about five to 10 minutes to install on my machine. I'm going to step away, grab a cup of coffee. I'll be back once Nopix AI has finished installing. And I stepped away to get my cup of coffee and the installation of Nopix has completed. So we need to restart the computer. So I'm going to click done. And we get a grub menu. So everything looks good here. And I've logged in to the XFCE desktop. I will say that the wallpaper, the icon set, the theming, everything looks really nice here. It looks sharp, looks professional, uh, a well put together desktop. But of course, I'm not really here to check out 
Debian with XFCE, right? Which is essentially what we're looking at. But I wanted some of the AI stuff. So I'm going to go into the menu system. I'm going to search for AI. And the first thing I get is Nopix AI installer. What is that? I don't know. Easy install AI application with Nopix AI. Hit OK. And it says success, but I don't know what it did because that was so quick. If that actually had to install something, I don't know what it could have possibly installed. Because even the smallest of programs don't download and install instantly, right? That was I don't I don't know if that was right or not. Uh, but anyway, we've got Nopix GPT AI. Let's click on that. So I would think this would be Chat GPT, but it's actually Copilot. Copilot uh, opener is what the title of the window says, but maybe this is Chat GPT. I'm not actually sure what we're looking at here. Uh, let me actually click on, how about Terms of Service? Terms of Service doesn't take me to a different page. Privacy Policy doesn't take me to anywhere. Forgot Password does take me to Reset Password, back to Login. And none of this other stuff really works. Uh, I don't have a Copilot account if this is Microsoft Copilot, so I'm just going to close that out anyway. But it, basically, it's just a standard kind of web application. We do have images, create and modify images with AI. This could be interesting. Let's see what this is. Ah, it's Krita. Okay. I wasn't quite expecting Krita to have AI integration. I don't really use Krita. It's not a tool I've played around with. I do know a lot of people in the free and open source community love Krita for uh, image creation. So uh, let's create a new image. I'm not actually going to create a new image. I just want to see the AI integration. Is there any AI tooling uh, right here? AI image generation. It says connection attempt failed. So you have to have some kind of account. If I move my head out of the way here, there is configure. And yeah, I need CUDA NV NVIDIA GPU, which I don't have on this machine. I would have it on my home computer, though. But anyway, you need to be able to connect to some server for you to have this built in AI uh, image generation tooling here. So uh, not stuff I'm familiar with anyway. I probably couldn't use it even if it was connected. <laughs> so and again, I don't really know how to use Krita here. So let me close this out. Anything else AI related? It doesn't look like there is. And let me go through the menu system and see if I spot anything else. If I go into the accessories category, we have some of the standard like XFCE applications like bulk rename your calculator, calendar, the CD burner, which I'm assuming would just be uh, XF burn. Let's see, no burners are currently available. Well, that is, oh, I, I'm talking about the hardware, but the program is XF burn is what it is. Yeah, XF burn 0.7.2. I guess it couldn't find a, uh, like an optical drive in the machine, the virtual machine, so it complained. You know, we've got File Manager, which of course will be Thunar. I'm really not interested in your standard XFCE applications. You guys have seen all of that before. I was looking for anything specific with AI uh, games. We have Lutris and Steam both here as far as the installers for both are here. Under Graphics, uh, we have our Document Viewer. We have Image Magic, LibreOffice Draw, and Ristretto Image Viewer is your standard image viewer. Under Internet, we have Firefox as our browser, and that's the ESR version of Firefox. FileZilla for FTP program. We have Nopix Tor Control. If you want to use Tor, you got some uh, other stuff. Mumble is here. Signal is here. Uh, transmission for our BitTorrent client. Thunderbird for our email. Under Multimedia, there's standard stuff here. VLC, you've got your CD burner. you got Audacity for a, a audio editor. Under Office, we have the LibreOffice suite and... Once again, calendar, dictionary, PDF viewer. Under settings, this is just your standard XFCE settings stuff. Nothing to see here, although they are using the Synaptic Package Manager. That is important to note if you want a GUI package manager. Uh, it's kind of the standard on Debian-based distributions, Synaptic. And it's a really neat program. And then under the system category, if I scroll around and see what is here, we have Nopix Package Manager. Why? Try to run that. 
nothing happens. That's interesting. So what is Nopix Package Manager? Let me edit application just to see the binary path. So it's Nopix install is the name of the program. So let me copy that. Let's launch it from the terminal and see if we get an error. That way the error message could tell me what the problem is. Ah, the problem is that desktop entry is not right. Uh, it's a bug. So Nopix package manager install, remove, upgrade software. That's probably supposed to link to something like the Synaptic package manager, but it's actually linking to the Calamaris installer, which really shouldn't even be here after you've done the proper installation because this is very dangerous to leave on the system because you don't want people to run the installer again. It wipes out the machine, right? It formats the drive. People lose data if they accidentally run this, right? So yeah, this I'm pretty sure that is a bug. And now that I found that that didn't launch, let me go back. Remember earlier when I did the Nopix AI installer? It doesn't look like it does anything. Let's actually see what the path for that binary is as well. So if I right click, edit application, it runs a script, nopixai.sh. Let me copy that. And once again, open a terminal. I'm gonna to try to run it from the terminal. And yeah, there's some errors. Couldn't connect to accessibility bus, failed to connect. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like that works either. Looking for some other Nopix specific tools, uh, we have Nopix tools. Let's see what that is. Looks like you got some setup uh, assistance for high DPI, network assistant, uh, brightness, sysstray, tweaks. So you've got some uh, ways to, I guess, tweak the desktop here. You got Nopix tweak, which I'm assuming would allow you to theme, yeah, like the panel, set the themes, uh, what compositor. Uh, display settings as well, all in one nice tool here. And that looks like about it for Nopix. Oh, we have one AI tool here. I guess I missed Nopix Diffusion. I'm assuming that's for stable diffusion, which is a way to uh, generate graphics using AI. Uh, it's not something I've played around with much, so I can't really do too much as far as creating images, but we have to agree to a license. Let's go ahead and hit continue and then I'm going to hit continue again here and then share analytics or don't share analytics let's don't share and then welcome to stability matrix so stability matrix is I believe a package manager for stability diffusion type tooling so let's go ahead and skip the first time setup uh, I have no idea what we do here probably add a package uh, show all packages sure uh, so uh, various stable diffusion kind of tools, uh, for example, Comfy UI. I've seen screenshots of it, don't know how to use it, but let's see if we can install it. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and click install and away it goes. Now I am in a VM and depending on how much space some of these packages take, I could run out of space on the VM, but I don't know. This could be a tiny package. It could be a big package. We'll see. Let me go ahead and click on more details. Yeah, and that way I get the little terminal. I can see exactly what all it's pulling in here. All right, and that finished installing and the little pop-out window with the terminal, you know, went away as soon as it finished the installation. Now we get Comfy UI. If I click Launch, we get another terminal. And I'm assuming this is going to launch us. Uh, well, it should have launched in the web browser. Failed to execute the default web browser. So the problem here is not Comfy UI trying to uh, launch itself. The problem is the default web browser, for whatever reason, maybe isn't set up properly, uh, where when I click the terminal, it doesn't know what browser to open. So I'll manually click on uh, Firefox here in this case, and then enter the address. Uh, the address was uh, HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon and then what was the port 8188 8188 yeah and it looks like it's going to load and this is comfy UI I have absolutely no idea how to do anything with this just gonna click on an image and then missing models yeah, and I, I, I'm not going to install any models or anything. Again, I wouldn't know how to use this anyway. It looks rather complicated. Kind of looks like a 
audio patch bay kind of style. You, you get various nodes of things uh, that control, you know, how the image is manipulated. Uh, I'm going to have to do a lot more research into how to use some of these uh, stable diffusion kind of tools. I haven't really gotten into the whole AI and image generation thing. I've, I'm much more interested in the large language models with AI. I find them much more uh, useful for the work I do. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of Stability Matrix. Really neat tool. I'm glad that that is here. That's actually, uh, you know, I, I know some people are going to probably have some negative comments on this video about, oh, I don't need a distribution that has all this AI stuff built in. Well, you know what? These days, a lot of people are using stuff like ChatGPT, Copilot, and uh, stable diffusion like these tools for some people like it's a part of their daily work and having some of this already built into a Linux distribution I think is pretty cool I think it's if they get this right because right now it seems a little buggy uh, Nopix AI right but if they really get this thing working well I could see Nopix being one of the distributions that kind of paves the way forward. It kind of leads the way in integrating AI in Linux. So there you have it, a very quick and cursory look at Nopix AI. You know, <laughs> again, you know, I, I've looked at this distribution many times over the years, you know, years ago, you know, before the whole rise of AI. And the fact that they're taking this in this AI direction, I think is a smart decision. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt Steve, 40 Millimeter, Cap Caveman, Darloff, Lee, Jersey Killer, Mark, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Reality, Sir Lust, Red Prophet, Roland, Morgento, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Nopix AI would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.